been good. Fernando's been good. But he's also had a little good fortune along the way. Made some of the runs, but he hasn't had the fastest car. That morning coffee, I have a feeling I'd have had a double shot of espresso before I got there. Dodge Power Brokers U.S. Nationals. Greg Anderson, his 100th career NHRA National event win, his seventh U.S. National win. But first of the season, Greg was the number one qualifier, got through Fernando Quadra, Troy Coughlin Jr., uh, Fernando Quadra Jr., and in the final round, his team car driven by Dallas Glenn. Greg, the milestone of 100 victories is something you've been chasing for a long time, and you did it at the sport's biggest race. How meaningful is that milestone? <laughs> I don't know that I can explain how meaningful it is, Joe. It's, uh, it's incredible. And, and I kept asking myself, what do I have to do? What do I have to do to win? And, and it wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be at Indy, obviously. So what a cool, cool deal. And, and, I've made no bones about telling everybody all my career how special Indy is to me. It means everything. It means ten times more than any other race. And, and there's a lot of other special racetracks on my schedule. Obviously, Vegas with Ken living there, and, and Charlotte where I live, and Gator Nationals, and all these great racetracks that I've had great success at. But nothing compares to Indy. It's, it's just it's an out of body experience when you win here at Indy. And, and to win number 100 here, I just can't possibly ask for anything more than that. I'm a lucky, lucky man, you know, to be able to say that I don't not only won 100 races, but win 100 to Andy. It's incredible. It means everything to me, Joe. It means everything. All right, let's open it up to questions from members of the media. We'll start out with Bobby Bennett from Comp Plus. Some 40 years ago, you came into pro stock as an apprentice with the late John Hagen, who was killed in 1983. Uh, Thinking back to those days, did he ever tell you that you would do something really special in this sport? No, and, no, Bobby, and he know that it, it's funny that you bring that up because his son, David, was here this weekend. He had to leave yesterday, he could stay for today, but he was here this weekend. He just felt something special was going to happen this weekend. And, you know, the, the kids have stayed very close to me ever since that day, and, and I, I love them to death. And they came here, and they came here <coughs> and uh, they just felt like something special was going to happen. I'm sad that he couldn't be here today, but he was here all weekend, and he, and he at least saw some very qualifying, and he saw that it was a, a real possibility, so I'm definitely going to have to give him a call as soon as I walk out the door here. A very special family. That's where it all started. That's where it all started, and, and uh, I can absolutely say with 100% sincerity, I would not be here today if it wasn't for that family, what they did for me. It was incredible what they did for me, and the opportunity they gave me, and the love they showed me, and it, it, uh, it all started there. It, it, 100% started there. I don't talk enough about it, you know, about the Hagen family, how special they were. But anybody that knew him back in the day, you probably did. Not anybody, anybody that knew him, he was one of those guys that nobody, no, not that anybody would say a bad word about. He was one of those guys that everybody loved. Another Rick Hendrick. I think mean, just you don't have many of them in the world. He was one of those guys. So I was very fortunate to spend time with him, and, and uh, you know, I, I treated him as he was my second father, basically. So it was a sad, sad deal, and, and uh, but I wouldn't be here without him. As simple as that. No, this is probably a tough question to ask. Warren Johnson gets a lot of credit 
for crafting you into to what you are today. But didn't John Hagen teach you a lot of profound lessons that you employ today? He certainly did, and there's no question that Warren opened my opened my uh, you know vision to a lot of different things, and certainly educated out to me on a lot of things that I hadn't already learned. But I had a good basic skill set when I came to Warren, and, and that's because of John Hagen. So it's uh, I guess between the two of them, they got me to where I'm at today, and and. Uh, taught me how to work on race cars, taught me how to work hard, and you know, learned, that, learned that, that work ethic, that northern Minnesota work ethic, and, and uh, brought it with me all my career. And, I, and uh, I tell people every day, I've never met anyone in my life that has failed in life by working hard. If you just work hard, you're going to succeed in life. It's really that simple. And, and I'm, not, I'm not a brain surgeon. I'm not the smartest whip out there, but I work hard. And I learned that from them. And uh, I don't think I've failed in my life because of that. So. It's a valuable, valuable lesson that a lot of people nowadays can learn. John Force, Frank Manzo, Dan Fletcher, David Rankin, and now you. Only five guys out of 100. It's probably going to be a long time before anyone else does it. Just your thoughts on being in that exclusive club. It's incredible. And I tried a couple, three years ago, you know, when I was you know, breaking over the 90 mark and trying to chase down Warren with 97. I, I tried not to think about it. It's just I was having too much fun racing. I was still thinking that I could race forever. And now I'm, I'm, I'm certainly coming closer to the end of my driving career. I'm 61 years old, and, and I got to be realistic. I can't compete with you know the Dallas Glens and, and all these young guys out there that can go double on the light every time out there. You can't do that. It's, it's, even if the cars are, you can't get it done much longer. So uh, my days are numbered, but I got to 400, and I'm, I don't think I'm done. I think I'm going to get a few more, and I'm not going to quit until basically I can't win anymore. But I know that day's coming because competition just keeps going up every year so pretty cool deal and pretty neat and that I think it's wonderful that the class is full of all these young guns coming into it that's what it needed but if it was just all the young guns it might not have the zip that it's got that's got now you still got to have a couple of crusty old veterans that still can't do it still can win to compete with these young whipper snappers you know these young guys that can do it so I think that's what makes the class so cool right now and I'm loving it. At what point did you become crusty? A lot of years ago. <laughs> Greg, you talked about how much Indy means to you, but you wouldn't have 100 wins if you hadn't won Indy, Indy seven times, which is pretty remarkable to, to win at this place seven times. Can you talk about just how special it is to have such a mastery of, of this place? It's wonderful. It's fantastic. And, I mean, and, you know, I remember back in the day when we were we were winning quite often here. I think it's been since 2011 since I won here. Is that true? Yeah. I think we looked up yesterday. So, been a long time, but from 2001 till 2011, we won six times, and it was it was pretty crazy. And you you, you, you convince yourself of thinking, man, I might win ten of these babies. And I can remember Frank Menzel, because he won like ten times or something like that. But, and I remember him saying, you know, I'm oh, nothing. Greg Anderson already got six. He's going to pull away past me. And then times become tough, and it became hard to win here. And you know, I'm not going to catch him, but that's okay. That just tells you how special Frank Menzel is, and how special Indy is, and how hard it is. But and back in the in the heyday or whatever you want to call it, we were we were knocking them off right back. But now when you go through a slump like this or whatever you want to call it, tougher times, you really appreciate it. Like this win today was probably my most special win ever, any, any win ever. Not only for the the hundredth reason, but just flat at, at this stage of my career to win it is uh, it's beyond belief to be honest with you. I talked to you back on Friday, and we talked about how it would have been a storyline, like a story written for you to have your 100th win and your 170th final round appearance be your 7th U.S. national win. Looking back on it throughout the weekend, what does it mean to you now? And now what does it mean to you that the only person standing in front of you for the most U.S. national wins in the pro stock being Bob Lydon? That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. And Bob Lydon was the man. He was certainly everything I have looked up all my years that I worked on pro stock cars before I drove. drove. Bob Lidden was the man. He was uh, the prime example of what I just said. Work hard. Hard work will never fail. That man worked harder than anybody ever knew, and he succeeded because of it. So it's uh, it's pretty doggone neat. He was. I feel like I'm kind of like that same cut out of that same mold. And uh, you know, he set the bar up. He set the bar. And when somebody sets the bar, you have to go chase it and see if you can get over that bar. But he set that bar. I respect that man forever. Greg, congratulations. 
you sit in a unique position in motorsports to be able to deliver outside of NASCAR wins for Mr. Rick Hendrick, who has won every big race you can in that world. And now you get to call him and say he got the big one in NHRA drag racing, the U.S. Nationals. Pretty incredible. Pretty, pretty incredible. He's, he's, a, he's a, as I said before, he's a fantastic guy. He's, he's the coolest dude I've ever met. He's the who's cool. He's uh, He's got it figured out, he's got life figured out, and he's got life made, and he, he loves to win. He, he doesn't do this just for fun, he does it because he wants to win, he loves to win. So when you call him or he calls you and you want, whether it's his car or my car, or anybody that he's involved with, he's, he's just over the moon, he's ecstatic over the moon. So but it's, it's always a wonderful phone call, and uh, today it came via Tony Stewart. So Tony was at the finish line, and he's like, "Is Rick called yet?" I said, "Actually, I don't know. Well, let me get a phone out and see if he told me he had not called yet." So Tony rang him up, and he's like, "Come on, Tony, well, we're at 80. Now with your boy." Oh man, I want the castle. Pretty doggone cool. And it's always great to talk to him, but it's just it's wonderful knowing that I'm kind of that same way. I love to win, and I don't do it just to come out here to place or show. I come out here to win, and if I don't win, I'm not. 100% happy. It's really that, that simple. So uh, he's that same kind of guy. He's in it to win. I love being associated with. Him. Great. Bobby did a great job of framing up the last four years and to help us understand how you got here today. How important is it for you to to kind of take that legacy of KB Racing for some of those young folks that you mentioned moving it forward? Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful, and, and, and I'm proud to be able to do that, to be able to help these guys, and uh, you know. We've got a great group. We've got a great stable. Obviously, the job that Dallas Glenn does is beyond incredible, and, and he's got great, great years to come. It's great for the class, and you've got Kyle Koretsky that's, that's getting better by the day, by the year. So, you know, we've got a wonderful team in-house <coughs> here, and, and I just feel proud of that. I, I think that I, I help those guys all I can, I, and I, I do everything I can to make their race cars run as good as mine. I, I don't mind doing that. I wouldn't have done that 10 years ago. It was all about me. Me, me, me. And that's, you know, I guess what I learned from Warren Johnson. You know, you race for yourself and you race to win. But times have changed and, and uh, I realize now what it takes to make sure this sport keeps going, this class keeps going into the future. And my son Cody can someday do it and, and drive a race car. So you got to become unselfish. And, and, I, and I did. And, and I'm glad I did. It makes some of my days tough, you know, <laughs> because I basically shoot my own foot up, but that's okay, I'm okay with that, so it's, uh, it's all great. Greg, uh, let's look ahead to the countdown. At the start of the year, you guys were a little bit behind, but through that hard work ethic that you talked about, it appears that you have caught the competition, maybe are a little bit in front, not only your car, but the rest of the KB Power cars, the team cars, the lead is still gonna be very strong, no more numeric, numeric milestones to achieve, only wins and championships. Uh, give us a preview of the countdown. Who worries you? What can happen? Well, everybody worries me, and, and the, the, really the bigger news yet is we should be worrying them right now. We were not a worry to them two months ago. We were not even a, an afterthought. A concern. It was their year. It was Team Elite's year and Erica's year, and, and deservedly so. They did a great job over the winter, and they made big gains. So I, I, I'm very proud of the recovery we've made, and, and here we are. We're resetting the points. And, and I've said it many times before, I'm not a big proponent of the way we do this playoff deal where you throw away all the points and everybody's even again because there's been too many years that, you know, we've had years like Eric has had this year. We come in with a huge lead and you would no way lose the championship unless you reshuffle the deck. And this year is going to play into my favor. It's going to give me a chance. And, and uh, I guess it evens out. So if that's what they keep telling me every time I complain about it, it'll even out. You'll get your chance the other way sometime or it'll be you know, helping you. So that's this year. And uh, it's as we're shuffling the, de the deck, they certainly know we're here and, and we know they're not going away. It's going to be a dogfight. And, and just like I said last year, even more so this year, there's of the 10 cars that are, you know, your top 10 cars, if eight of them aren't favorites to win, I'll leave my hat. I, I can't pick a favorite or a team. So it's great. It's great for Prozac. Greg, how are you going to celebrate this win? Well, I was supposed to fly out at 8 tonight, but I think I'm going to cancel that flight. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to hang around and have a little fun and relax and just soak it in, you know, to be honest with you. It's, uh, my wife's not home anyway. She went to the beach this weekend, and she's having fun on the boat. She's been sending me pictures on the boat with everybody all weekend, so she's having fun not coming home until tomorrow. So maybe I'll just wait till tomorrow and we'll, uh, we'll stay around town and have a little fun and 
slow down for just a minute because we've, <laughs> we've been digging real hard the last few few months and not taking any time off we're in seven days a week so maybe we are we are this one we're in a little time off so my guys are uh, they're tired but i am so damn proud of them it's the job they've done the recovery they've made this year and uh, it's a new fight it's it's uh, it's absolutely going to be an exciting playoff because of what everybody's done in these big years Greg, congratulations. First pro stock racer in history to 100 career NHRA national event wins. Seven Indies, go celebrate. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it.